Okay, so now we're going to be talking about integration of exponential functions. And we're going, I've given you the rule here for the indefinite integral, but we're going to be looking at definite integrals. But suppose that you have some exponential base a, it could be any number. Uh, so a to the power u, you integrate that, you end up with a to the u over the natural log of a plus the constant of integration c. Now we're going to make this fit that form here, but we're going to be using u substitution. So let's go ahead and pick our u here first. Well, this right here is a suitable u. So I will write it out here, u equal x cubed, and, and that's really easy to take the derivative of. We just get 3x squared dx. Well, I know I've got 27x squared. That's the same here as 9 times 3. So what I'm going to do is kind of rewrite this integral. I can pull that 9 on the outside in just a minute. All right, but the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my limits of integration where I was going from one to two before. Now I'm going to go from one cubed, which is still one, and two cubed, which is eight. Okay, so it looks something like that. Okay, let me move this up just a little bit. All right, so I've adjusted my limits of integration here. And let's see what we've got now. Well, this right here, the 9, of course, is going to go on the outside of the integral. The integral is now going to go from 1 to 8. Okay. Now, I'm going to write it still as the 3x square and then the 4 to the x cubed dx. But I'm fixing, which is technically not correct, but I'm going to write it with my rings here for my u and my du because now I'm ready to write it in terms of u. So I'm going to write 9 on the outside, the integral from 1 to 8, and then I'm going to have 4 to the power u du. And now it fits nicely with this rule up here at the top. And so when I do that, okay, I end up with very basic integral if I just follow the pattern. It's going to be 9, of course, on the outside. It's 4 to the power u over the natural log of 4. Okay? Evaluated from 1 to 8. Okay? So what I'm going to do, the 9 and the ln of 4, and let me put another little ring around it right there, that is a constant okay so there's nothing algebraic about it it's a constant number 9 over the natural log of 4 all right I basically have 4 to the u where I'm plugging in my 1 and my 8 so what do I get I get 9 over the natural log of 4 I have 4 to the eighth power minus 4 to the first power and you can do the math there on a calculator, all right? I will leave you to that. But you do that, subtraction, the exponents, the subtraction, you know, follow the order of operations. You multiply it by 9, you're going to get something huge, like 589,788, all divided by the natural log of 4. All right, so... It's actually pretty easy. I think the hardest part is keying all of that into the calculator, really, quite honestly. All right, let's take a look at another example. And this one is nice because we're going to get some trig involved here. Let's call this one number 10. All right, and let's see what number 10 looks like. All right, so this is the integral from 0 to pi over 2. All right. And it is 5 raised to the power of the cosine of t multiplied by the sine of t dt. All right. And so we're going to pick our u. And our u is this nice little cosine there. So u is the cosine of t. And we do our du, which is going to be negative the sine of t. So you got to be real careful with that. Negative the sine of t dt. Okay. So... 
we look, we've, we're missing that negative. We're going to make it happen. A negative there, a negative there. Now we're in business because now we have our U and we have our DU. Okay. Now all that's left to do is to adjust our limits of integration from zero to pi over two. So we're going to take the cosine of zero, which is one, and then the cosine of pi over two, which happens to be zero, if you're looking at your unit circle. And we've got something really nice here. So we for sure have a negative on the outside. We're gonna have, we have the integral from one to zero. I know it looks kind of weird, but nothing to it really. If you reverse this, you can get rid of the negative. So think about that. All right, but I'm not going to do it. So we have five to the power u du. And then we follow the rule, the form that was laid out at the very beginning. We have a negative one, okay, multiplied by five to the power u over the natural log of five. Okay, evaluated from one to zero. So what does this look like? A negative one over the natural log of five, and then we're going to have five to the zero minus five to the first power. Okay, that's nothing to it. This is just one minus five, which is negative four. And we're gonna have a negative one times the negative four, which is a positive four over the natural log of five. So it ended up being positive is what, what I was getting at earlier when I said you could just make get rid of the negative by flipping the direction there. All right, so four over the natural log of five. All right, and I think we can look at yet one more example, uh, definite integral. We're gonna involve a logarithm here, but it's still going to be this kind of exponential stuff. So let's take a look at the very last example here for this video, and that is to look at number 11. We're going to have one, the integral from one to five, and it's five raised to the natural log of x over x dx. Now you should start seeing something here. It's a really nice one. This is u. So if that is u, if u is the natural log of x, what is du? Well, we know this. It's one over x dx. Well, guess what? We've already got that, okay? That's this thing right there. And actually, let me stick with my red color. That's this right there. So there we have our dx over x. We've got our du. And now we adjust the limits of integration. And we're going from 1 to 5. And so this is nice because it's pretty straightforward. The natural log of 1, well, if you know anything about these logarithms, you know, the natural log of one is going to be zero. Okay. The question is e to what power is one e to the zero. When you're thinking about what a logarithm really means, a logarithm, remember, gives you an exponent. So the ln of one, the natural log of one is zero. The natural log of five, well, we're just going to write it as natural log of five. Pretty plain. Okay. Nothing to it there. So now we've adjusted our limits of integration nothing to account for because we had everything we needed right from the beginning. So zero to the natural log of five. And then we're going to have, uh, let's see here, five to the power u du. What does this look like? Five to the u over the natural log of five. And then this right here is going to be evaluated from zero to the natural log of five. All right, so really one over the natural log of five gets factored out on the inside. We have five to the natural log of five minus five to the zero, okay? Five to the zero, of course, just becomes one, okay? So when you clean this up, you get five to the natural log of five minus one all over the natural log of five, your final answer. So really not terribly difficult. These rules are really nice. The definite integral is nice because you adjust the limits of integration. You don't have to back substitute. What more could you ask for? 
It's relatively easy when you think about it. As always, I hope this video was helpful. And remember, like and subscribe.